And we're back with more legal news you can use, talking to Doug Andrews about divorce, custody, alimony, and support modifications. Let's do it. That's a mouthful. It is. For, for something that you really don't care about anymore, I guess, <laughs> that you're still paying for. Yes, yes. So uh, once either alimony, child support, or child custody is set, you can change it. So you fought really hard for an extracted period of time, and, and now you're... Uh, maybe. Maybe you're going to change maybe. your mind. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Is that because the parents want to see less of the children, more of the children mostly? Well, let's start with premise one. Upon granting of a divorce, it's a final decree. That's supposed to mean all the battles are over. <laughs> Not true. You can modify that final decree so it taint final anymore, but it requires specific reasons, good justification for doing so. It's like double super secret probation? There you go. Okay. Uh, which is easier to modify? Neither. <laughs> so they each have their own peculiarities and hoops you got to jump through. And sometimes you can fight real hard just to decide whether the, any modification is going to be considered. Once you get past that hurdle, then you decide, well, how much modification? And, of course, if one parent wants to go up, the other parent's going to want to do what? Go down. Right. So you have a battle on both ends. Well, let's talk about alimony first. Uh, your ex marries somebody with a whole lot more money than you. Is it fair you keep paying them a lot of money? Taint fair at all, but you might have to. So they can did, double dip. Did you agree in your settlement agreement, if there was one, did you by agreement say, I'm going to pay the wench for life? If so, you're stuck, whether she marries or not. Uh, her death will take you out of the uh, situation, but maybe not short of that. Most alimony, though, is terminable. Most alimony is terminable, does end upon remarriage. Then the question comes up, well, when she marries the same kind of bum she married the first time, that marriage ends. Does she get to go back and reopen the alimony? Maybe. Depends upon the terms in the final decree. So you better have a lawyer that knows what he or she's doing. Make sure that you know what you're agreeing to. I've never even heard of that one. <laughs> she can go back to number one after dumping number two Could and be. get money from him. Could be. That's amazing. Could be. So you need a really good lawyer to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about child support? Same thing. Well, child support's a little bit different uh, in the sense that depending upon when the decree originally was entered, if it was entered and this could take a while to explain. I know we don't have all day. A pre-1977 decree, all you looked at was, in our typical example, we use dad, did dad's financial circumstances change, the obligor? Did his circumstances change? That was the only question prior to 1977. Effective 1977, then you could look at, did the circumstances of either parent change? For example, did mom marry well, and now she doesn't need as much child support? Well, from 77 to 86, you could go on that ground. Then in 86, we changed it again where it is now, that it could be either the financial circumstances of dad or mom, or no change there, just the needs of the kid has increased. That would be grounds for modification of child support. What if the kid changes schools and goes from, say, a $10,000 a year private school and they move to a better community where he can go to public school? Would that be in the decree that it's for that use only, or can she pocket the $10,000? No, that would go to the needs of the child have decreased. Now they're in a good school district, doesn't need the private school. So that could be a legitimate basis to seek modification. But remember this, remember this, even if you show grounds to terminate alimony or change child custody or change child support, just because you prove there's a good reason to do so, court doesn't have to. It's up to the judge. If you have a judge make the decision about child support or alimony, judge doesn't have to modify it. 
just gives him the ability to do so. Or do, are they looking for a reason to help you, or are they looking for a reason to hurt you? And how much depends on you in court? Okay, I'm going to give you my famous answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I mean, sometimes you have um, rulings that are based upon, I'm sorry, not a very attractive, meaning conduct-wise, a party. I mean, if somebody has been very difficult, they may not get what they're asking for. If the relationship, if they've caused the problems and so forth, even though legally they might be entitled to, maybe they just don't deserve it in an equitable sense. And the judge gets paid big bucks to make that kind of decision. If you find yourself paying a lot of child support, would it be easier to just go for custody and avoid paying it at all? Well, a lot of dads think that. Um, I say be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Taking on that parental role may be not worth the money. But there are some dads who will say, I, I can't afford to pay. I'd just rather feed the kid myself, beans and hot dogs every night. And so they think that a, a shared parenting plan where the custody is split roughly 50-50 would be the way to get out of it. If that's not what was originally done, it's not likely to be granted by the judge or agreed to by the other parent absent some other unusual circumstances. Okay, so. and that was a, basically a money question. What if it finds out, the husband, find, the ex-husband finds out that, that mom's now living with a member of the Hells Angels and you need to take your kid for safety reasons? Well, then that would be a circumstances affecting the best interests of the child. And that would be an absolute good ground to pursue the change of custody. But again, just because it's a Hells Angels ma member, maybe he's a good Hells Angel. Maybe he's teaching the child a trade. You never know. <laughs> and uh, lastly, can grandparents seek custody during or after a divorce case if neither parent's worth a flip? Uh, that, the answer is they can seek it. Uh, Georgia law, national law doesn't favor grandparents getting the child over a parent unless you can establish the parents are unfit. And in that case, the judge could do it if they intervene before it gets to that point, though, the grandparents ought to f be filing a petition for deprivation uh, caused by either parent. And absent the divorce, that action gets filed in juvenile court. Juvenile court is better geared up for that kind of action. Okay. Well, thank you, Doug. If you have any questions for Doug, you'd like to ask him a question, you can reach him through our toll-free number at 888-2037-LAW or through the website at TalkingLawTV.com. We'll be back with more legal news you can use right after this.